questions. Uh, in first place, I would like to introduce you to the uh, jury this morning that is seated in front here. Um, Mr. Carlos Vogler, Executive Director of the UNWTO. We have Mr. Duarte Cunha, who is the General Manager of Hacienda La Zorita. Mr. Carlos Diego de Lastra, our CEO of La Roche. Mr. Omar Valdez, Executive Director of uh, Temis UNWTO. And as a secretary of the jury, we have Ms. Eugene Tay, secretary and program officer for the Knowledge Network of UNWTO. Thank you very much. So um, the, we're going to be calling out the different universities and members that will be presenting. Just for you to know, uh, the jury is actually looking for innovation in your project. Uh, the actual application uh, of the project, the possibility of applying, and, of course, the general uh, presentation itself, okay? So, the first university I'm going to call is, I'm going to call is Saint Fautur in Peru. And please, um, please keep in mind one thing. Behind the audience, we have a Jonathan. He has a yellow light and a red light, okay? So, the yellow light means that you have one minute left, and the red light means that you have to finish your presentation, okay? Just for you to know. So, please welcome Rodrigo Cayuri and Rosso Silva Arieta from Zenfotur, Peru. Hello. This is your clicker to move, from, to move the presentation. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Me escuchan, ¿cierto? Bueno, queremos presentarle eh, nuestra idea de, de investigación. Buenas tardes al señor jurado, buenas tardes a todos los presentes. Eh, bueno, el título de nuestra, nuestra idea es la solución, eh, este voluntario turístico, la solución para el desarrollo sostenible del talento humano. El turismo en el Perú. El Perú, el Perú, esos últimos tiempos, ha tenido un gran crecimiento económico. Dado a muy, eh, a, a, a muy, uh, a, muy eh, a, a muchas gracias al turismo, que es la tercera actividad eh, que se ha desarrollado en el país con más fuerza. En los últimos tiempos, el Perú ha recibido unos 700.000 turistas, eh, pero en, los últimos, en, en, el, en el último año hemos recibido 4.700.000 millones, millones turistas. Eso significa que ha habido un cambio. Nosotros como país eh, estamos implementando el Plan Estratégico Nacional del Turismo, que la última actualización ha sido del 2016 al 2025. Pero ese plan tiene unos objetivos y nosotros como país queremos cumplirlos. Queremos consolidar, consolidar el Perú como un destino turístico sostenible. Queremos contribuir al desarrollo social y económico de las comunidades rurales del Perú. Y queremos alcanzar la meta de que en el año 2025 queremos llegar a los 10 millones de turistas. Pero ¿cómo nosotros, como país, vamos a lograr ese propósito? Queremos utilizar como modelo el turismo sostenible. Y como actividad, el turismo rural comunitario. En el último año, nosotros, como país, tenemos 75 proyectos de turismo rural comunitario en más de 16 regiones del Perú. En el último año, tenemos 2.44 millones de dólares de ingresos gracias a esta actividad y más de 135 mil visitantes que han realizado esta misma actividad. Esos datos nos van a respaldar más adelante para que ustedes puedan entender nuestra idea y que nos va a respaldar. Bueno, bueno ahora yo les explicaré nuestra idea. El voluntariado turístico consiste en reclutar un grupo humano 
que, proveniente de escuelas de turismo que se encargue de desarrollar, gestionar la actividad turística en sociedades vulnerables que cuentan con gran atractivo turístico. ¿Por qué voluntariado? Porque nos ayudaría a cumplir los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible de las Naciones Unidas. También porque nos ayudaría a proteger nuestro patrimonio. Beneficios del voluntariado. Nos ayudaría o nos beneficiaría con la, el desarrollo de la inclusión social y a monitorear el, los objetivos de desarrollo sostenible. Hola. Bueno, yo voy a explicarle eh, el voluntariado en el pueblo de San Juan de Chucuanico. Este pueblo queda ubicado en la Sierra de Guaral, en Lima, en nuestra capital. Es un sitio rural. Eh, nosotros realizamos un viaje hace, hace un tiempo, hace un tiempo atrás, eh, donde pudimos entrevistar a los pobladores de este, de este lugar en donde nos, nos decían sus, sus problemas, nos decían eh, que tenían eh, falta de agua, tenían pobreza, eh, la agricultura no les, no les ayudaba. En resumen, tenían varios problemas. Entonces, en ese momento, nosotros nos preguntamos, eh, ¿por qué este pueblo no puede desarrollarse gracias al turismo. Este pueblo de San Juan de Chucuanico tiene eh, el centro arqueológico de Chiprac, que da unos 2 a 3 kilómetros de distancia del pueblo. Este centro arqueológico eh, necesita ponerse en valor. Nosotros eh, queremos... Queremos responder a esta pregunta. ¿Por qué funcionaría el voluntariado turístico en esta localidad? Primero, como antes lo dije, el, centro, el poblado tiene el, el centro arqueológico de Chiprac, el cual, el cual eh, aumentaría mucho eh, el, el, el llamado de turistas. El, el pueblo es rico en costumbres y cultura. Eh, y con el turismo rural comunitario se podría dar a conocer al mundo. Quiero acotar que el pueblo fue el que produjo que se nos, ocur se nos ocurriera esta idea. Gracias a este pueblo se nos ocurrió esta idea. Ahora pasaré a explicarles el desarrollo de nuestro plan en ocho etapas. La primera, identificación y reclutamiento del equipo. Por ejemplo, en nuestra escuela, Cenfotur, existen las carreras de administración turística, administración hotelera y guía oficial de turismo. Este grupo, con esos conocimientos, podrían ayudarnos a desarrollar esta idea. Segunda etapa, visita y establecimiento del equipo voluntario. El equipo voluntario visitaría el pueblo y haría estudios de destrezas, estudios del área geográfica, estudios de cultura y de patrimonio. Perdón. Tercera etapa, talleres didácticos y capacitación. Los voluntarios harían talleres con los pobladores para capacitarlos en temas de energías renovables, eh, desarrollo sostenible, en TRC, entre otros temas. Etapa 4, de los talleres al campo. En esta etapa los pobladores pondrían en práctica todo lo aprendido en los talleres. Etapa 5, plan piloto. Invitaríamos amigos y a familiares a visitar el pueblo para que los pobladores tengan un entrenamiento más real. Etapa 6, campaña agresiva de promoción. Utilizaríamos las redes sociales para promover el flujo, el flujo turístico en el pueblo. Etapa 7, primeras visitas de turistas. En esta etapa veremos cómo desarrollan todo lo aprendido los pobladores en la actividad turística. Y en esta etapa también los voluntarios, viendo que los, los pobladores están capacitados al 100%, retornarían a Lima. Etapa 8, supervisión. Cada cuatro meses los voluntarios volverán al pueblo para supervisar la actividad turística, la gestión y también para seguir capacitando a los pobladores. Conclusiones.
Utilizaremos el turismo como herramienta para poner en valor nuestro patrimonio. Nuestra idea puede ser aplicada en toda sociedad remota, que cuente con gran atractivo turístico, en cualquier parte del mundo. El voluntariado es un salón de clases en el cual los pobladores y los voluntarios van a desarrollar el talento humano, desarrollando destrezas, habilidades y también cuidando el ambiente. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Rodrigo y Rosso, de Zenfotur. We will now continue with the second uh, presentation by Cotelco Joven from Colombia, and I would like to call to the stage Ms. Luisu Flores and Jose Ricardo Díaz Ardila. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Luisa Flores and he is Jose Ricardo Diaz. We are volunteers of the o Hotel and Tourism Association of Colombia. Um, thank you to WTO and Le Roche for inviting us to participate in this event. Uh, for us, actually, it's a pleasure to stay here and present you our strategy. Uh, we are going to talk about the context, uh, a gap, a challenge, our strategy, uh, a case study, an impact, and our vision. Um, for our strategy, it was important to see some information about the tourism around the world and our country. Uh, we can see uh, the tourism is increasing and its benefits are expected to grow too. And it's for young people, it's so important because it means that we have more opportunities to work in the sector. Also, it represents a challenge for the destination, in this case for America, in order to improve uh, the talent uh, in the region and have a better uh, tourism uh, in the country, in this case, Colombia. Our Colombia, um, the tourism uh, represents the second economy sector, 10% uh, total exportations, 1.8 million jobs, and 5 million visits. Uh, the context of Colombia nowadays is so positive because of the peace, and it's important because Colombia has a lot of emerging uh, destinations, and we are the people who is responsible to develop uh, sustainable plans in order to improve the, the tourism in the country. Uh, for that reason, for us, it was important to create a space in order to know what the students are thinking about the new content and about uh, the opportunities that they have in, in this. Uh, as a result, we had 200 tourism leaders feel first lack of experience and knowledge uh, to face the labor environment, and second, need of more integrate between actors. So, as Luisa told us, it's about that people, young people, want to take by their hands to, to plan with all the decision makers in Colombia, and I think in the world too. So we can see here a tourism value chain that we created in our association with our members in our workshop. And it's about having inside the human resources, the challenge is to put the tourism volunteering in an entrepreneurial approach. It means to have the connection, the real connection before graduating to a professional association, as Linda said before, too. So we have the enterprise and the academia, but there is a lack of communication between these actors, and we want to be the bridge to this, um, to this gap. So youth volunteering, the tourism integrating factor, it's just about um, to bring 
the students and the graduates from different tourism-related majors into leaders, decision makers, and to sit at the same table with decision makers. And we do it with three key lines that we are going to talk about later. And we are going to, to take companies, academic institutions, government, and society, and young people, what gives the sector is the opportunity to have develop talent and the sector give back with internships and different kinds of projects because there are no ideas nowadays. It's about projects in our association. That's why uh, we created some years ago Cotelco Hoen. There is a chapter of youth inside Cotelco that is an affiliate member of UNWTO. Um, our mission is to associate, but it's different because we associate not only from one university, for example, we are from Externado, but we are from six different affiliate members of UNWTO, and we have worked some years on that. Um, we have developed this strategy in 10 uh, regions of Colombia, and, and it has worked perfect, and we are seek, seeking for like expanding our mission too. And the lines are on the job training, as a member of the management team, you can be part of the general assembly or you can go to finance, events, marketing, and learn on the job and bring things into action or an internship in public or private organization. The other one is updating training about organizing events and workshops by young people for young people and developing soft skills such as team work and communication, different of these ones that are important to share knowledge. For example, there are some people there from another city in Colombia doing a workshop by themselves. And creation. Creation is the most important one because we cannot stand by only in the training. We have to go forward. And it's about brainstorming, action plan, and implementation. We have made it a lot of times. And it has worked with the Vice Minister of Tourism in Colombia, and I think um, we can start like uh, spreading this in other countries. That's why Luisa will tell you. Uh, we developed the first Tourism and Young Leaders Congress in Bogota this year um, with the slogan Reinventing the Panorama. Uh, this initiative was made from young to young leaders and um, according to the lines that Jose says. Uh, first, on the job training, uh, we had a group for uh, 14, 15 uh, students who create uh, the event. Uh, Cotelco was approved the idea. And also we ask, um, <coughs> we ask uh, support uh, to the minister. And finally, we got it uh, re resources to do it. That's right, it was with the resources from the government. Exactly. And the second one, up there in training, uh, we had uh, 400 leaders uh, were training through panels, conference, uh, workshops, and they could develop soft skills like communication, leadership, and teamwork. And finally, the creation uh, for us is the most important because we want to create a space in order the students can explain or show uh, their ideas about the new context of tourism. And for that reason, uh, we created the youth panel. Uh, we had eight uh, students par uh, to participate in the panel, and we had one winner and she is implementing her idea uh, nowadays with the, in a region of Colombia. Even you can see here, um, maybe you know her, Abrianda Lopez from Hustling International. We were working with her. She's an affiliate member too of UNWTO. And we, we, we love to have links and to embrace um, all the opportunities with the sector. So it is possible, it is viable, and and actually, in Colombia, there is a great movement from government and from enterprises to get young people inside. And that it has been a tough work. Um, at the beginning, some uh, 14 years ago, it was like, 
well, how can we do it? And after that, we started to create strategies. And the strategy that we are talking about today is a new one, like the renovated that we have uh, embraced. So it's about personal and career growth for young leaders. It's about develop human resources for enterprises, for companies, so that they can um, reduce their cost of develop, development uh, of talent and employability at the end. There's a lower turnover because people are motivated and it's about a flexible schedule uh, volunteering. For example, I work at work uh, one day each week, other people only get one hour a week and that's the important thing because everybody can uh, join us. And responsible traveling because um, a leader that is well paid, well um, developed in talent, is going to travel too, because it's about traveling for the new generations. And the, mo the money start traveling again inside all the value chain. And we have equality, because we want to, to have the same opportunities in all the regions in Colombia, and if we can um, go to other countries too. So we are this like kind of balance between academy, companies, statistics, supply is what we do. Thank you, and let's join us. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for respecting the time. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Luisu and Jose Ricardo from Cotelco Joven. Yes, thank you very much. Don't take that back with you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to continue um, with Universidad del Magdalena in Colombia, and I would like to call to the stage Andrea Cantillo and Anderson Lopez Trillos. Thank you. Amarillo les queda un minuto y cuando es rojo se acabó. Good afternoon, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are from Santa Marta, Colombia. We are student of the Magdalena University. We are going to explain our idea called the youngest talent, introducing as a strategy to avoid the exodus in the Sierra Nevada of Santa Marta. Uh, but first, we are going to show you a little video about Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Please, video.
Wow. Some, inf uh, some information about Sangra Nevada de Santa Marta. What is Sangra Nevada de Santa Marta? Sangra Nevada de Santa Marta is the highest mountain range near to sea in the world. Uh, it's located in the north of Colombia, uh, in South America. People that live there, uh, uh, there live four communities, indigenous communities, uh, the Kogis, Arhuacos, Wiwas, and Cancuanos. There, they live together, farmers. We choose two communities in this, in this idea, for our idea. The communities of Congo and Korea. Uh, people that live in these communities uh, make their living cultivating coffee, celery, strawberries, um, and other crops. But uh, the people that live there were victims of the armed groups, such as FARC and AUC. Uh, for that reason, many years ago, uh, this area was dangerous. But now, with the peaceful agreement of the government of Colombia, this area is a safe zone. But problems didn't go. The principal problem, the big problem in these area, areas is uh, the immigration, especially the immigration of young people, because young people, uh, they, 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 are in, they haven't a lot of opportunities uh, for youth, only the crowds. Uh, other problems here, there is, are the, Low level of basic needs satisfied, uh, low training in tourism, uh, there isn't good access, uh, the low training in tourism, the low level of schooling, this is, there, are, there are the principal problems in these areas. Well, as my partner said, the big problem is the immigration, so we want to to fix this because the young people is moved to the urban centers to progress and looking for a, a good future. So the challenge posed by these obstacles can be solved with the Universidad del Mandalena with carry out of the educating of the local population because it has a tourism program. And there, the young graduates or interns can be the professors or trainers. And also it could facilitate its center of entrepreneurship for this activity as well. And the town half of Cienaga, as a manager of this area, will participate in the creation of the communal center internet access, where the young people over there can take an online classes, uh, teach them by the youngest graduates at the Universidad del Magdalena. And the tourism entrepreneurship initiative, that there's the relationship between the town half of Cienaga and Universidad del Magdalena will be created. The private public companies will be uh, where the entrepreneurs will be the public, the private sector, and the trainers will be the public sector. And um, definitely, this proposal will increase the local human talent as an important tool for tourism development. It contributes to the competitiveness of productions and destinations. This strategy also of training and entrepreneurship in tourism also seeks the sustainable use of tourism resources. And this prevents the youth food exodus, thereby generating a great impact in a local population or population who want to progress, and it raises the choices of war. On behalf of the Universidad de Mandalena, thank you so much and thank you for listening. much. Thank you. Thank you again, Andrea and Anderson from Madalena. Uh, next up, we have Miss Eleonora Miruzzo from RJC with the Business Network. Hello, Eleonora, this is for you. You can speak where you wish, and this is okay. for your presentation. Thank yeah. you. Good afternoon.
I am Eleonora Mirruzzo, and I'm here on behalf of my working group uh, to present our uh, project concerning how to take advantage from uh, talents to improve competitiv competitiveness uh, of a touristic destination. Uh, before starting, I would like to present my group. Um, we are three guys um, that study at the Rey Juan Carlos uh, University in Madrid. Um, Damian Moreno, que, um, that is not here, um, he studies uh, at the um, uh, Manilva uh, at the University of Huelva. And um, he decided to, to join the National Mobility Project. And Matteo Bernazza and me are from Italy. And uh, we both study uh, tourism at the University of Rome, Tor Vergata. And we are here in, uh, in the Erasmus project. So after the presentation, uh, let's show our idea. Um, business network, how to take advantage of, um, of talents to improve the competitiveness of a tourist destination. And we analyzed the touristic sector and um, the situation, and uh, we taking into account our observations and the desk analysis. And we found some problems that to um, prevent uh, the use of talent and uh, the consequent destination development. And among them, we found that often uh, tourist destination uh, had, have, has, I'm sorry, <laughs> has um, no professional staff. And um, so we have less quality and uh, we have limited, limited, I don't know, okay, uh, limited development of destination and uh, it needs, it needs strategies to implement talent and make competitive uh, a destination. And over here, uh, universities qualify professional figures. Um, there are a lot of jobs uh, that um, often um, destination um, don't know. Don't, don't know. <laughs> and, um, but uh, they are so important uh, because add, um, add value at the destination. And we have also limited employment uh, of professional human resources. So uh, how can we end uh, to this? And can we, what can we propose to uh, encourage uh, the use of talents and to create um, a, a value proposition of the destination. What is our winning proposal? So we suggest to create an uh, online platform uh, managed by the destination management organization, um, which is a professional's uh, company mm, of the touristic sector. Um, thanks to this platform, um, all the stakeholders of destination can communicate and uh, express their doubts and proposal. Um, why um, have we choose, uh, did we choose um, the, the, the DMO? Uh, because uh, it's um, a specific role and it also has a, a talent and uh, it manages and controls all the decision making uh, and the organizational um, processes of the destination. So, destination man the destination man a good destination manager uh, must be able to manage uh, all the local actors 
and he organizes them in a focus group, uh, taking into account the destination and the business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in this way, he can, he can help them uh, to, to teach and to the, the, the importance of the knowledge and the, um, the, the cooperation uh, using uh, a professional talent. So thanks to the use of the DMO platform, the destination manager uh, can organize this focus group and um, with every destination and um, that can uh, that can be uh, a public or a private uh, sector or uh, the citizen or um, and the different kinds of talents and um, in this way the creation of business work um, business and talent collaboration is uh, essential to add value to the tourist destination um, in the south you know, <laughs> in the south of Spain, uh, there is a village named Manilva um, that could represent an embryonic example of this idea. And uh, here is happening uh, something similar um, because the mayor uh, created a network uh, between uh, the various local businesses and uh, the young generation um, and uh, helped them to work together and I want to hand uh, this presentation with uh, this uh, African proverb that says I want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go with others and thank you so much for your attention. We didn't take a picture of uh, Peru, but we'll do it afterwards. Yeah. Thank you very much, Eleonora. We'll continue the presentation again from uh, Rey Juan Carlos, and I would like to call Natalia Ariza. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Natalia Ariza, and I come from the University of Juan Carlos in Madrid. Um, my, the title of my project is "Yat, You're Talented. Um, when I first read the assignment, they um, launched the question of uh, innovative ideas to implement talent development strategies for competitive destinations. Um, Actually, I asked myself, what is talent development? I know we've been talking a lot of this in these past few days, but actually, I Googled it. And then I realized that um, we, it's not working. Okay, well, it doesn't matter, it's not working. Um, okay. No, I don't think so. Okay, I keep going. Um, when tourists travel, they demand experiences, and those experiences are, are affected with the people around them. But these people um, are actually the employees of the tourism industry. Um, um, <laughs> Okay, well, I keep going. Um, those people are the ones that are in charge of, uh, that, that can affect with the experience of these travelers. Um, okay. <laughs> um, no. 
Well, it's okay. Um, Va como para hacia atrás, pero bueno, espera, lo voy a hacer así. <laughs> what I was saying is that the employees of the tourism industry are uh, the people had can, that can affect in those experiences and are the ones that um, are going to make those experiences as pleasant as possible to make them come back. Um, but um, uh, being in directly contact with the client forced them to be very qualified and very updated with the new trends and, and, and technologies. Um, this development of these um, talents of these employees can cost the company a lot of time, which in business means money. That's when the idea of JAD came out to my mind. Um, JAD, it's, um, it means actually you're talented. Um, it's a project of, uh, that works with people that want to get into the tourism industry. We, what we do is to train the, these workers uh, that lately will work in a hotel or a restaurant with um, uh, practical courses and coaching sessions to help them to develop and achieve their potential. Um, the process will be that people with our experience uh, come to YAD for training. They are people very excited to get into the tourism industry and they sh will have to pass a specific um, selection process. Once they have passed the selection process, they will be um, in the program. After, after this training, they will work in a hotel or a restaurant, but how are we gonna position them? Well, we're gonna position them because um, hotels and restaurants are gonna contact us for qualified employees. They can request on a specific profile and we are in charge of facilitating them the employees that they are asking us. Um, but Maybe you're asking yourselves, why would a company would want to use our services? Um, well, because using our services, they can focus, well, it's competitive, it, they will be more competitive. Um, they can focus m in, in another strategic goals, and actually they would save uh, money, That's a, that as, as I said, um, money in business means time. Because um, human resources department can focus on something else, and we will do the training and the recruitment of the employees. Um, also, they can be sure that the, um, the employees that they will have will be perfectly qualified. Um, the, best, the important thing is that they will work from the, first, from the day one because the training is already done. Um, as I said, we offer courses for uh, but lately we wor they will work for a restaurant or a hotel. Well, the courses that we offer for restaurants will be food and beverage, marketing, finance, and, and events. And for hotels, we um, um, offer courses for uh, housekeeping, front office, events, safety and security, sales, reservation, reservations, marketing, and food and beverage. Um, the courses are um, focused on motivating these professionals and to educate them. As I said, with coaching sessions to help them to develop and achieve their potential. They will have uh, virtual classes, but also the companies that use our services will have to come um, to bring us the employees that we have provided them to continue with the training because we believe that training is not only once. They have to um, keep updating with the new technologies or circumstances that the, um, the world offers. Um, well, um, who's going to pay this education for these workers, this training? Well, actually, the um, students who come for the training to YAT, 
there will have to be an, an specific fee, but this specific fee will be almost insignificant because who actually pays for this, for this education and for this training are the companies that are, are going to use our services that lately will work with them. They, these companies are actually going to invest on talent development. Um, the location of YAD will be, um, well, at the beginning um, in Spain, specifically in Madrid, but we hope to expand all over the world because we want to be in those places where education is not as accessible as it is maybe in Europe, for example. Um, finally, um, we, I want to make sure that um, the... Um, also, uh, both the students and companies can make sure that they will receive the best education and they will be um, educated by, uh, by the hand of professionals very experienced in the field. We want the, um, as the um, client to come back and we want the best experience for them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Natalia, and thank you for reminding this generation that it's not only about PowerPoint, and thank you for how you improvised. <laughs> Our next student is from uh, Queensland, and her name is Nicola Knight. Yes, the gentleman over there will let you know. Yellow is one minute and red is no minutes. Good luck. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, mine, I'd like to say, firstly, a very big thank you to you all for allowing me and the other students here today the opportunity to present to you all. Um, my name is Nicola Knight, and myself, along with... Oh, where do I... <laughs> there. <laughs> Myself, along with my teammate Kelly Hindham, who unfortunately is not able to be here today, are students at the University of Queensland, Australia. Um, today, I will be discussing uh, our idea for attracting and retaining talent within a seasonal tourism context and being the Talent Exchange Program. Following this discussion, I will then explore how the Talent Exchange Program will also contribute to talent development and destination competitiveness. The Talent Exchange Program provides an effective and innovative solution for attracting and retaining talent in destinations that experience high levels of seasonality. The program works on rotational placements that allow employees, otherwise known as talent, to move between organisations and therefore remain employed in the industry, regardless of the season. This also allows tourism industry organisations to adjust their um, staff numbers according to the season without jeopardising the needs of the employees. The program aims to match employee skill level with organisational needs while providing the employee the opportunity to work in a destination of their preference. In this strategy, the talent applicant um, becomes an employee of the talent exchange program and is placed within a destination host organisation on a contract during the peak season for that particular organisation and destination. The talent exchange program strategy involves three parties, the seasonal destination host organisation, the Talent Applicant and the Talent Exchange Program Organisation, which I'll now refer to as TEP. This model of the Talent Exchange Program strategy shows the inner workings of the program and how it is beneficial to generating tourism talent and increasing destination competitiveness. Firstly, both top talent and seasonal destination organisations apply to TEP, which you can see on the left and right sides of the diagram. During this stage, TEP will get information on the length of the peak season from the, in the destination, how many employees the organisation will need, what skills the employees will need to possess, and the job vacancies, um, job descriptions of the vacant positions. Organisations will also be required to provide evidence of being a tourism or hospitality related um, organisation in order to ensure that TEP talent is not exploited. Where applicable, TEP may also conduct site visits of the destination organisation to ensure working conditions are suitable for the talent applying to work there. 
The talent applicant application will include general information about the applicant, but will also include the types of destinations, organisations and roles that they wish to work in, how much they wish to travel and the skills that they possess. The applicant will also have a referee check conducted. This type of information is critical as it ensures that the effective matching of talent with the destination host organisation and it also ensures the satisfaction and retention of top talent. TEP will then match the talent applicants with the most suitable organisations um, and roles based on the information they have presented and the profile that they have built. Once the organisation has been notified of and accepts the talent that has been uh, matched to their role, the employee, will, um, the employee will receive a contract offer from TEP outlining their placement. Once the TEP employee has accepted their job offer, they will also receive additional training in preparation for their placement. If the employee is travelling to a country outside of their home country, they will also receive cross-cultural training at this stage. One month before, one month before the end of each TEP talent um, employee's contract, the host organisation is required to submit an evaluation of the employee. The evaluations are based on key performance indicators set by TEP and the host organisation. This is to assist TEP with future training and talent development of their staff and to identify who their greatest and most talented employees are. The employee is then able to apply to stay on at the destination host organisation as long as the host organisation requires their ongoing employment, apply to another placement elsewhere or to choose to leave TEP. However, TEP does encourage for top talent to remain in the program. The, T the Talent Exchange Program will attract top talent through a range of lucrative opportunities. Firstly, the program offers individuals an exciting opportunity to work in different organisations, locations and roles. This provides individuals the opportunity to broaden their understanding and knowledge, both in their career and their personal life, as it allows new experiences for them to be involved with. More importantly, the Talent Exchange Program provides all these exciting opportunities with the added bonus of having security of permanent work. This is especially important for those working in tourism and hospitality organisations, especially in seasonal destinations, as they will have an understanding of the work fluctuations that are associated with the industry. Therefore, these individuals will value the fact that the TEP provides this benefit and be attracted to apply for the program. The Talent Exchange Program will also provide mandatory and voluntary skills and career development opportunities that employees wouldn't normally have access to. These opportunities, which I'll discuss later on, will also help to attract individuals to the program. Additionally, the Talent Exchange Program will also ensure that it does hire top talent through the application process that I mentioned earlier. The Talent Exchange process Program will also be efficient in retaining top talent. Firstly, as staff are employed by the program itself and not the destination host organisation directly, um, it is the program's duty to ensure that they retain their top talent. Furthermore, as the TEP is based on collaboration between tourism-related organisations that experience high seasonality, it will therefore also ensure that all of the involved organisations retain their top talent for their organisation through the program. The program will retain the top talent, as most importantly, it will ensure that all staff have permanent work in the industry, regardless of the season. This is a highly attractive aspect of the program that retain our employees as they'll understand how valuable this aspect is, especially when many of them may be used to fluctuations in their work that reflect the seasonality of their organisation and destination that they have worked in. Furthermore, staff will be motivated and excited by their work as they'll have access to extrinsic motivators such as moving into roles of their preference and intrinsic motivators such as skills development and career mastery goals that have been shown to um, enhance performance and enjoyment. This will ensure top talent remains in the program and also in the tourism industry. Now we'll look at how the TEP will contribute to talent development and destination competitiveness. The Talent Exchange Program will contribute to talent development and destination competitiveness by providing security of work, skills development and training opportunities that will allow staff to provide better service and experiences for tourists. Firstly, the TEP will ensure that each talent applicant has a profile that details their educational history, including any degrees, courses, and certificates completed, a summary of their transferable skills, and their career development program. This will promote transparency of qualifications and skills and the continuous development of each individual in TEP. In order to continuously develop talent within the program, TEP will provide accessible opportunities for accessible educational opportunities for individuals to develop their skills and knowledge of customer service, experience management, and the tourism industry. 
This will include a mandatory three hours of online training outside of their regular work hours every six months that they are employed by TEP. There will also be other voluntary training opportunities that are um, available to employees that they can choose to participate in. This continuous improvement of the education and skills of the individuals in TEP will ensure that they are able to provide high quality service and experiences that will directly influence the productivity and competitiveness of the destinations that TEP is used in. These hours, both mandatory and voluntary, will be counted towards each individual's talent keys. The talent keys will be an online database that is attached to each person's profile and details the key learnings that they have unlocked during their time in the program. Overall, these keys unlock the talent of each individual by providing them with the resources and opportunities to grow and develop and therefore impact the organisations they are working in by helping them to succeed and grow, leading to an increase in destination competitiveness. Finally, the matching of talented staff to host organisations will also relieve staff shortages that are likely to be experienced by organisations during peak seasons. This will mean that guest service and experiences will be improved as wait times will be reduced and guests will receive a more personalised service. Ultimately, this will lead to a po positive impact on destination competitiveness. From looking at the information I've presented today, it is clear to see that TB has a number of advantages. These advantages all overcome the challenges of attracting and retaining talent in a seasonal tourism context, as well as providing opportunities for talent development and destination competitiveness. Thank you for your time today. I hope my presentation has provided you with a deeper understanding of our idea. Thank you once again, Nicola from Queensland. Thank you very much. Next, again from Rey Juan Carlos, uh, wanted talent, and I present Alfonso Lago Garcia and Alvaro Sanchez San Miguel. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, allow us to introduce ourselves. My name is Alvaro. This is Alfonso. We came from Rey Juan Carlos University, and we have an idea we would like to explain. Uh, in this project, we also work with David Maeso, but he's not currently present at the stage. To understand what is wanted talent, I have to, to ask a question. Do is anybody know, knows what Shark Tank is? Yes, no? Well. Shark Tank is a TV show when, where uh, entrepreneurs make business presentation to a panel of investors and who then uh, choose whether or not to invest. And Wanted Talent works in a similar way. The idea is to have a known area in the most important tourism fairs around the world where young people with talent and ideas uh, can showcase to the tourism industry. As you can see, there is a visual summary of what is Shark Tank and what is Wanted Talent. As you can see, talent and tourism industry. To retain and show the genuine talent, we will have an expert panel from the tourism sector to select the best ideas. These ideas, which have been previously selected, uh, are able to be exposed in the most important tourism fairs around the world. In, the, in, carry out, uh, in order to carry out their, their ideas, like Fitur, Meet, Emex, and so on. As there are many sectors in tourism, uh, in order to easy companies uh, to be focused in their specific interest, we divide the finalist projects in uh, as transport, technology, accommodation, hostelry, and leisure activities. Uh, well, as Alvaro said, a lot of companies from many different kinds of sectors will be able to attend to this event. We think that the best, the best days to, to develop, develop our idea will be when these fairs are just open to the companies and authorized persons, because we just want to be there people who might be really interested in it. The project will be the next one. We would like to have a main stage with screens, as you can see right here, projectors, and other audiovisual facilities in order to make 
the presentation easier to comprehend for the public. Moreover, in front of the main stage, we would like to have a place for the attendees. Also, as you can see right here, wait, sorry. As you can see there, we want to have a delimited area for the speakers where each one will have its own individual stand. And now you may be wondering, how does it work? Well, it's really easy. I'm gonna show you right now. First of all, when you are seeing the different presentations, if you like them, you have to write down the number of the speaker. As you can see. Then, you have to go to the delimited area and go and take a ticket with the number of the speaker you have chosen. Now, with your ticket, you are able to go to the speaker stand and deliver your ticket to ask for more information to the speaker if you want. And what's new here? Well, the most popular stand, I mean, the one that collects more tickets along the fair, will be rewarded with a grant for their ideas. But what about the financiation? Well, we think we won't need much money because we want to use the international fairs as direct connection with our ideas. However, if we need some money, it will come from the tickets or maybe grants from the state or the global tourism organization. Finally, when it comes to schedules, the, a program with the different schedules will be attached when you buy your ticket. However, you can find it online. In summary, a place where the real challenge and tourism professionals can work together. A point where ideas, talents, and tourism professionals will have the opportunity to cross their paths. A collaboration and development space with talent as the main theme. Thank you so much for your attention and see you soon. Thank you very much, Alfonso, Alvaro, and David. And last but not least, from the University of Wakayama, please um, welcome Nautiro Murata, Marika Endo, Aine Wakutani, and Kurumi Shimakawa. Was that right? Okay. All is yours, okay? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be one of the finalists today. I know you are tired, but if we survive the next 10 minutes, Flamenco is waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce our team members. This is Aine, Hi. Naohiro, Hola. and Marika, Hola. and I'm Kurumi. We are from Wakayama University in Japan. We are here today to present to making the global code of ethics for tourism accessible to all, especially the younger generations. We refer global code of ethics for tourism simply as the code. 2030 is a target year of international sustainable development goals. <coughs> Imagine in 2030, who will be the promoter of sustainable development? What can we do now to contribute to sustainable development for future generations? Our project is the ultimate challenge for talent development. But first, I would like to introduce our university. Wakayama University is located in the south of Osaka in Japan. We just celebrated 10 years anniversary. Our undergraduate program has three streams, student management, regional revitalization, and tourism and culture. Wakayama University is the first University has received UNWTO TED course for its undergraduate program in March this year. 
Our UNWTO student team consists of 23 members. Our activities are liaison of UNWTO conference and translation of tourism highlights and tips for travel into Japanese. We are currently working to make the code easy to accessible to children and students. Okay, next, I would like to introduce four backgrounds of our project. First, UNWTO established the Global Code of Ethics for Tourism in 1999 as a fundamental philosophy for sustainable tourism. Second, it is estimated that the number of tourists will reach 1.8 billion in 2030 and tourism impact will increase. Third, United Nations has set up the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, which is being realized into a number of practical actions towards 2030 as a target year of achieving a more sustainable society. And at the last, this year, 2017, is the International Year of Sustainable Tourism for Development, and it has been decided that the code will be converted into an international convention. According to these backgrounds, we identify three issues. The first, what is needed to achieve the goal for sustainable tourism. We thought the society will need talented and well-informed tourism employees. And second, for these people, it is necessary to understand the concept of the code, but it is too difficult to understand even for those who are studying tourism. And third, the code is not known to the general public. To solve these issues, we came up with two solutions. One is that we have to understand the concept of the cause ourselves. That's because our generation will be leading the society in 2030. <coughs> and, but that's not enough to achieve sustainability. So, and the other is to make the concept of the code to accessible to younger generation who will be coming into society in 2030. We believe increasing number of people who appreciated the code will be a key for a better understanding of sustainable society. And for these solutions, we are designing four actions. So action one, we will explain the call to younger generation. The target should be around 10 year old children. The so action two, we will be analyzing the concept of the call and make it easily understandable. For example, we are making story picture books, which will, be, which will be explained in a minute. And in doing so, 10-year-old children can understand important points to practice sustainable tourism <coughs> for the de development. And action three, uh, we will promote the pic picture story books by distributing them among schools. And action four, we will make Japanese and English versions of this book. We hope in the future it will be translated into Spanish and the other languages. And we are already developing the prototype of this book. And the title will be, What is Tourism Ethics? getting familiar with the Global Code of Ethics for Tourism. This is a work-in-progress version. 
the code includes 10 articles. So we translated original text into Japanese to familiarize ourselves the meaning of the code. After translation, we brought them together and made it coherent as the whole text. We made a summary for children and secondary school students. Then we translated back into English. Let's have a look at example. This is article seven. Left side is for children and right side is for students. For children, we added activities I'm sorry, we added activities so, so that children will have fun learning about sustainable tourism themselves. For students, we just put outline of articles and original text. You can browse our book if you scan this QR code. If you are interested in this project, we can give you this card to try out. We will appreciate, for, uh, we will appreciate your feedback on our project. Finally, I'd like to emphasize, we hope those children who learn the Global Code of Ethics for Tourism through our project will be the promoters of sustainability in private and public sectors. This is our passion. Muchas gracias. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Naoiro, Marika, Aine, and Kurumi. So we have. Um, this one is mine, thank you. <laughs> we have come to the end of these exciting presentations. Uh, our judges will be uh, discussing it and we will actually um, say who the winner is this evening, correct? Yep. So uh, make sure you come tonight to the incredible dinner that we have prepared for you and you will know what project has won the competition. Before we finish, I would just like really to call all of the students that have presented here on stage for a group picture and a big round of applause for their job. Yeah.
please don't leave us. I need to make some important announcements for, for tonight. Uh, of course, our sessions in the auditorium are, are, are over. We will absolutely miss this, miss this crowd and everything that we had here, and hopefully we can host this again in the future. Um, just to let you know, if anybody would like a certificate of participation, please contact the organization, Jonathan, for example, and that certificate will be sent to you.